everybody, and welcome again to Z Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we've got you covered. Now that Major League Baseball is past the All Star break, we got a lot of things going on. We got the trade deadline. We got uh, teams trying to make a push for the wild card in divisional races. And as of now, there's about half of the league still in the hunt for playoff positioning. So we're going to take a look at some games for July 31st. Before we do, I want to invite you to join so you have access to the VIP club section right here. It has all the tools to help you make your picks. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some of these games here. First game we want to look at is the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins. The Phillies, the defending national champions, are finally starting to play good ball. They're burning hot at the moment. They have won uh, three out of their last four games. And they're coming off an impressive uh, two uh, games to one series win against the Baltimore Orioles. And... The thing is, though, they're, they're facing a team in the Miami Marlins who they have struggled with. Miami's coming in ice cold up. They're just 2-4 over their last six. But if you look at the head-to-head uh, -head matchups between these two teams, Miami has owned the Phillies this year, and they just, for some reason, the Phillies have not played well against them. Miami has won uh, four out of the six games between the two teams. In the power ranks indicator, you do see that the Phillies, on a, after a severe downward trend, are back on the upswing at plus 18 while Miami is at plus 11. The pitchers have not yet named for this game, but if you look at the, the score predictor, this looks like Philadelphia by a wide margin, 10 to two, but confidence in prediction is less than the toss of a coin. And if you look at the over-under, the teams have been trending in games more under the line than over, so this 12-run total might be a bit too high. In the end, though, I think this is a Philadelphia game. They're playing very well. I think this is their time to end their skid against the Marlins and start making their rise uh, towards the top. The next game we want to look at is a divisional matchup between the Rays and the Yankees. This is probably going to be the, the game of the day. The Rays, after being on top of the division all year long, have stumbled there 2-8 and eight over their last uh, 10, and they have, fallen to sec they have fallen to second place. And the Yankees, who would have thought that the Yankees would be in last place at the end of July? But here we are. The Yankees are in last place. But at the same time, it's a little misleading because the Yankees still have a winning record and have a shot at the playoffs. And lately, they have been playing very well, 4-2 and two over the last six games, and you can see average up versus ice cold down. The score predictor, though, despite how well the Yankees have been playing, it's Tampa Bay 7, New York 5, with confidence in prediction of about 72%. Um, on the power ranks indicator, Tampa Bay still has the edge here at plus 25 compared to plus 10 for the Yankees. Now, uh, keep in mind that th these numbers here are from a couple days ago, uh, July 26th. And this is July 28th at the time of the recording of this video. Head-to-head -head wise this year, uh, you can see Tampa, uh, let's see, I haven't really taken a look at this yet. So let's see, the Yankees, two out of the last three at home against, actually two out of four, a four-game series. And then there's a three-game series earlier in the year at Tampa where Tampa won two out of three. So the home team has taken advantage uh, in this series. So here we are, the Yankees at home. I think this is a Yankees game. I'm going to take them. And a slug fest. So if you like high scoring games, this is the one for you, Yankees and over the line. Baltimore and Toronto. Here's a here's a, a situation. Who would have thought that the Orioles would have the top uh, record in the AL East? Yes, the Orioles were uh, improving the last couple of years significantly compared to their really very, very low down times. But I think it's a bit of a surprise that they're in first. But hey, they, they deserve it. They're in first place right now. They are coming off of a two game losing streak and they're average down. While Toronto is three and three over their last six games and they are average status. The score predictor looks like a very tight one here, 4-3 in favor of Baltimore, but the confidence of prediction is very low at 34%, so take that with a grain of salt right now. The power ranks indicator, no surprise here for Baltimore. Lately, they have been at or near the top of the league for the past, uh, you know, a couple weeks now, uh, close to a month, really, while Toronto is on a little bit of a downward trend from 26 down to 20. Uh, if you look at the over-under, the teams have been trending on opposite sides of the over-under line as of late. If you look at the head-to-head -head matchup between these two teams this year, let's see, the, they played three recently in Baltimore with Baltimore winning two out of three. And then earlier they played three in Toronto with Baltimore winning all three. So Baltimore has really taken charge of Toronto so far this year. And I don't really see any change in, in this one. Let's go with the Orioles. I think this will be a lower scoring, so Baltimore and under the line. The next one we want to look at is, let me scroll up through here, Cleveland Guardians and the Houston Astros. Again, here's two teams that are right in the playoff hunt. Cleveland, burning hot. Uh, they have won their last three. 
while Houston is average and they are 4-2 over their last six. I know our center guard is scheduled to pitch for Cleveland, and you can see here that he is 1-4, uh, the very poor ERA of 7.16, and a poor bet at minus $465. And if you see for the Astros, they have not yet named their starting pitcher. If you take a look at the over-under streak, you can see that the teams have been trending in games over the line, Cleveland four out of their last five, and Houston in two of the last three. Uh, the score predictor has it a tight, tight one here with Houston winning 6-5. to five. Confidence in prediction is only about 54%. I think it's important to look at the head-to-head -head matchups. And if you look at this for so far this year, you can see that they played three games back in June with uh, Cleveland winning two out of the three. And two of the three games were tight ones, 10-9, uh, 6-4. That, that one was in favor of Houston. And the other one was a 5-0 uh, shutout in favor of Cleveland. If you take a look at the volatility officer, how stable have the two teams been with regard to their favorite underdog status? You can see Houston plus 10, uh, 12 compared to plus 10 for Cleveland. So both teams pretty stable, pretty consistent in that regard. I think this is going to be a lower, well, maybe now let's see. See, I'm flip-flopping here because I'm, right I'm right on the edge here with this. The score prediction at 6 to 5, 54%. I think we're actually going to be over in this one. I like this to be a. Game for Houston at home, and I like them to go over the line. And the last one we want to look at for the day is the Boston Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners. If you look at this, both teams coming in burning hot. Boston winners of their last four, Seattle uh, four out of their last six. And the thing is, both these teams are near the bottom of their division, again, in the standings. But the AL has been very competitive, and they are both over 500. So you never know. They are still in the playoff hunt. If they get hot, one of them could still, not both of them, Perhaps, I don't think both of them, but one perhaps could make a serious run at the postseason. The score prediction is for Boston 6-2 to two with confidence and prediction of a toss of a coin again. Um, if you look at the over-under, you can see the trends are on opposite sides of the line with Boston under in their last three and Seattle in games over in their last two. Head-to-head -head for this season, they have played three times and... All games have been pretty much blowouts. 12-3 for Boston, 9-4 for Boston, and 10-1 for Seattle. So if you like a tight scoring, nail-biting drama, this is not the game for you. If you like uh, more runs, this will probably be a fun one to watch. Um, if you look at the stability factor, I want to take a look at that real quick. Um, you can see Boston has been very inconsistent. They were as high as uh, plus 5 here on the stability factor. And, but now they're at minus six, so lately they've been very inconsistent with regard to their favorite underdog status, and Seattle has been moderately consistent with theirs. Really, this game is like a toss or coin for me, but I really do like uh, Boston in this one. I think they will win this in a higher scoring game. Why not? All the other ones have been between the two teams. Let's go with Boston then over the line. So there you have it. Those are the games from Major League Baseball for July the 31st. Happy betting, and we'll see you next time.